today I'm going to be showing you how to make two of my patterns. One is this top pattern, which is called my Jenna pattern. That is going to be in the second half of the video. And the first half of the video is going to be showing you how to make this reversible Enid pattern. So it's like an A-line swing dress. I've tried to make sure everything is as beginner friendly as possible. The patterns are available on my Etsy and I think that's everything. So let's get on with the video. So I'm going to start by working on the reversible dress which is my Enid pattern. Um, and if I don't say otherwise I'm going to be using my overlocker for everything on this project. So if you don't have an overlocker, you can also use a zigzag stitch. The only thing I'm not gonna be using my overlocker for is the top stitch. So wherever I talk about sewing the seams in place, you can either use an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. So for this project, I'm gonna be using a four-way stretch fabric. This is 95% cotton, 5% elastane, and I got this one from Minerva and this one from Jelly Fabrics. I would normally recommend with a reversible project to choose two colors or patterns that complement each other a little more than these do, but obviously I wanted to make the Wednesday an Enid dress. So I'm going with black and pink. I don't know how well this is going to work because this might show through this side, um, but we will see. So I'm going to start by laying out my fabric to cut out my pattern pieces. So I'll start with this black piece and I'm just going to lay this out. Because this is fabric without a right and wrong side, it doesn't matter which way up I lay this. But if you have a fabric with a right and wrong side, you want to make sure that the right side of your fabric that lays on the bottom is facing up. And then now I've got that mostly smoothed out, I'm gonna take my pink fabric and lay that straight on top of the black. Again, if this was a fabric with a right and wrong side, you want to lay your top piece with your right side facing towards the other fabric so that you will have two right sides facing together. But if you're using a block fabric like I am here, it won't matter um, how you lay them. So now that I've got my two pieces of fabric laid out, I'm gonna take my pattern pieces. So for the dress, you'll only have two pattern pieces. One is your pocket, and the other is obviously the dress piece, which is quite a large pattern. Um, so now I'm going to draw two of these out onto my fabric, which is gonna be quite tricky because it is bigger than my table. Um, I'm going to draw two of these out and then I'm going to draw four pocket pieces out. So I'm going to draw two in this orientation and then I'm going to flip it and draw two in this orientation. So I'll be back when I have drawn them out. So I've just finished drawing out two of my pocket pieces and one of my dress piece. So I had to kind of move the fabric down as I was drawing it out to get everything on the fabric, but the easier way would probably be just to do it on the floor, especially if you've got any hard floors, and um, just lay everything out on a clean floor. Um, so now I'm gonna take my pins. This is especially important with such a big piece. Also, forgot to mention, there is a mark on the pattern that shows where the pockets are going to attach. So I've just marked that in place on both sides. So now I'm going to take my pins and just pin within all of these lines. This is just going to make sure that when I cut it out, both of the layers of fabric don't move around too much and I get closer to two identical pieces. I'm just gonna finish doing that. So now that I've got all my pins in place, I'm gonna go in and cut these pieces out and then do my second dress piece and my other two pocket pieces in exactly the same way. So I've just finished cutting everything out. So I've got my two dress pieces here, just folded them in a half so that they can actually fit on the table. Um, and both of these have two layers of fabric, obviously. So in total, you've got four of these dresses cut out and um, you've just got each colour pinned to each other and on each one as well I have marked in the guide on the pattern for where the top of the pockets should sit. Just put these to one side and then I've also got my four pockets cut out as well and as you can see I've got two in this orientation and two in this orientation and again 
they've all got two layers of fabric. So I'm gonna start by taking one of my two dress pieces and I'm gonna sew around each armhole, around the neckline and along this bottom edge of the skirt. So I'm only gonna be leaving open these side seams and the very top strap. So I've just finished sewing all of these seams in place. So I've done the bottom edge of the dress and then around these armholes and the neckline. I'm just zooming in a little bit. So you can see a little bit better where I've sewn up here now. So I literally just left these top straps open. And now this is completely optional, but I like to add a bit of flat braided elastic. This is five to six millimeters wide. Um, I like to sew that right on top of the seams that I just sewed just around this top area, so not around the bottom of the dress. So I just lay that straight on top and lay that in place. Um, this just gives a little bit of extra structure to the top area, like I said, completely optional. But if you do have some flat braided elastic or you can get some quite easily, I would really, really recommend it. So just starting on one of my armholes, I'm going to take this elastic and lay that right on top of the seam that I just sewed and then place that under my overlocker and then just using this finger I'm going to guide it around. And then just cut that off at the end and then sew it off. And then I'm going to repeat that for the neckline and the armhole on the other side. So I've just finished adding all of my elastic. It doesn't matter which side you attach the elastic to. The only thing is that whichever side you do add it to, will be more likely to peek through to the other side slightly. Um, so I just added it on the pink because I know that when I add the top later in this video, um, the top for the black side is completely opaque. So you won't see anything that peeks through on the black side, whereas the side for the pink side has a lace top that's gonna go over it. Um, so it doesn't matter really which side you add that to. So now I'm gonna turn this to the right side out so that I can add my pockets. So this is the dress turned to the right side out. And then I'm gonna take two lots of my pockets, both in different orientations. And then I'm gonna find the mark that I've left from the pattern that shows, this shows where the top of the pocket should line up with. So I'm going to take the top of the pocket and line that up to the mark that I have left from the guide on the pocket. So line up the top edge of the pocket there and then this straight edge of the pocket lines up with the side of the dress. So I'm just gonna pin that in place but just through the pink layer. You don't wanna pin it through both layers. So just like that, you can see that's not attached to the black side at all. So I'm just gonna repeat that with my other three pockets. So the other side for the pink and then both of the sides for the black. So I've just finished pinning all my pockets in place. I'm gonna go in and just sew down this edge on each one, making sure that I don't sew these two layers together. So just sewing the pink to the pink and the black to the black on each side. So I've just finished attaching my pockets. You can see they're not attached to the other layer. And then I've gone in and repeated everything so that I have two more or less identical pieces. So I'm gonna turn this top one inside out. And then my goal here is to put this piece, which is still the right side out, inside the piece that is inside out. So the first thing that I'm going to do is find my straps 
and then put them inside the straps of the piece that's inside out. Just making sure the right fabric is facing the right fabric. So I've got pink facing pink here. So that's one strap inside the other one. I'm just gonna pin that in place. And then find the other strap and do exactly the same thing. So just pass it up inside here. Again, making sure the right fabric is facing the right fabric. And then pinning that in place. And now I'm essentially going to do the same thing, but with the sides of the dress. So I'm going to take this bottom edge and pass it through to the same edge on the piece that's inside out. It's probably quite hard to see because it looks like just a pile of fabric at the moment. So now I'm gonna to start to match everything up. So this is the kind of armpit area. I'm just gonna pin that in place. And this is through all four layers of the fabric. And I'm gonna to come to the pockets. Start to pin them together, again through all four layers. I'm going to put some more pins in these pockets. So just one down this edge. And then around this bottom section as well. I'm just going to move straight down to the bottom hem here, bottom hem of the skirt. Pin in there. And just another one a little bit further up. Just always making sure that I'm getting all four layers and that the fabrics are facing the right fabrics. So then that looks something like that. So we've pinned all the way around that edge. Um, I'm just going to go in and repeat that on the other side. So I've just finished sewing both of my pieces together. So I've done right at the top of the straps and then round and down both sides. So now I'm just going to unpick a small section in the pocket so that I can turn it to the right side out. It doesn't matter which pocket you choose to do this. So I've just finished unpicking that hole. I'm going to gently push the whole dress through there so that it is back to the right side out. So once your dress is turned to the right side out it will look something like this. And now I'm just going to go in and close up this hole with a leather stitch by hand. So for my ladder stitch, I've just kind of folded this in on itself, which should be easy because of the seams on either side. And then I'm going to take a stitch on one side of the hole and then just come over to the other. I'm just going to keep doing that, going in one side. And then over to the other side. And I'm just going to do that for the length of this hole. And then I'm going to come back on myself to make sure that the stitch is secure. And then I'm going to tie it off at this end. So now that I have closed up this hole, the dress is essentially done. Um, I'm just going to do two things to it now that are completely optional. So the first one is that I'm going to add a top stitch which isn't something I would normally do with reversible items um, but because this has so much fabric it can tend to look a little bit bulky. So I'm going to go around my neckline 
and obviously around the back of there and then around my armholes just with a zigzag stitch and then I'm also going to go all the way around the bottom of the skirt like I said this is completely optional you can just leave the dress exactly as it is but I just wanted to add a top stitch. So I've just got my regular machine here and I've set it to the middle size of my zigzag stitch. And I've just threaded the top with pink thread and the bottom with black thread. Um, just because obviously I've got two very different colour fabrics. So I'm going to sew on top of the pink side and then obviously the underneath of the stitch will be mostly black. So I'm going to start with one of the armholes. So I'm just going to line that up to the edge of my seam. And just start to follow it round. And then just coming round to where I started, I'm just going to join them up so that it can't come undone. So that's the first bit of the top stitch done. So I'm going to go in and repeat that for the other armhole, the neckline and the bottom of the dress. So I've just finished all of my top stitching around both of the armholes and around the neckline. So the final thing I'm going to do with the top stitch is because of how I did the thread colours, a little bit of the pink is always going to come through on the black side. And I actually really love the way that this looks. I just don't think that it's very Wednesday-esque. Let me just zoom in actually because I don't know how well we can see it. So I've just got all these little dots that you can see here. It's really cute. I just don't think it works for this project. So I'm just going to take my black fabric pen and literally just colour them in to get rid of them. So I'm going to do that around the bottom of the dress and then around the armholes and neckline as well. So now I'm going to move on to making these tops which aren't reversible. So this is going to be two different tops that I'm making and this is using my Jenna sewing pattern. I'm going to be using two different types of fabrics for this one. Um, the pattern itself is intended for a four-way stretch fabric, which is what this one is. I think this was 95% viscose, 5% elastane, and it is from Minerva. Um, so this is the perfect fabric for the pattern. This one, not so much. This is just a woven lace, so it has no stretch to it. But I thought this would be perfect for Enid's top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna size up with the top and hopefully it will still fit absolutely fine with um, this fabric. So I've just started by laying my Wednesday fabric out and then I'm gonna take my pattern pieces so for this pattern, you will have two pieces. You'll have one piece that is the central top piece, which is gonna be the same piece for the top and the back. And then you also have a piece for your sleeves. So for the sleeves, I'm gonna draw two out onto my fabric. There is also a central mark here. I'm gonna draw that in because that's gonna tell you where to attach your sleeve to your top. And then for the top piece, I'm going to draw four of these onto my fabric. Two of them are going to act as a lining. Um, so for this one in the stretch fabric, I'm going to do four. But when it comes to the lace fabric, because I want that to be see-through, I'm only going to do two. So I'm going to leave a lining out. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut these pieces out. I've just finished getting all of these cut out. So I've got two pieces for my sleeves and four for my top. Like I said, two of these are gonna be the lining. So if you have any material that is a similar composition to the one you're using here, you can just use that as your lining. Like if you have any scrap fabric, but it might just be easier to just cut it all out in your base fabric because it is quite a small piece. So now I'm gonna go in and cut out my pieces for the Enid side as well. Like I said, it's gonna be exactly the same, except there's only gonna be two top pieces rather than four because I won't be doing a lining on that one. 
So that's my pieces for Enid cut out as well. I've got my two top pieces and my two sleeve pieces. I can't quite figure out how I'm going to finish the edges of this one because I was hoping I would be able to leave them raw, but having cut it out, it definitely needs some kind of finishing. Um, so I need to figure that out. But I'm going to put this to one side for now and make the Wednesday top. So I'm going to start by focusing on my central top piece. Um, so I've taken two out of my four pieces and then with right sides facing together, I'm going to lay one on top of the other. This fabric doesn't actually have a right or wrong side, so I don't need to worry about that. But if you're using a fabric with a right and wrong side, just make sure the right side is facing the right side of your other piece. Then I'm just going to take some pins and pin around the armhole, around the neckline, and then around the armhole on the other side. So I'm just going to go in and sew those edges in place. So both of my armholes and my neckline, you want to make sure to leave this strap open at the top and then you'll also be leaving this bottom section open as well. I'm going to use my overlocker. You can also use a zigzag stitch for this. So I've just finished sewing around this neckline. Like I said, don't do around the armholes. I was just on autopilot. And then I've gone in and done that with the other two pieces as well. So I'm just going to turn this one to the right way out. So it looks like that. I'll just zoom out a little bit. And then I'm going to take this one that's the right way out and place it up inside the one that's inside out. So now here, if you have decided to do a different fabric for the lining, you want to make sure that the right fabric is facing the right fabric. So you won't need to worry if like me, you've just done the same fabrics for both sides. But say this was a different color because it's the lining, I will make sure that this lining is facing this lining and the same with just your base fabric. So I'm just going to put this up inside this strap and pin it in place. And then I'm going to do the same with this other strap. And again, just pin that in place. So you should have all of your layers lined up like that. Now I'm going to go in and sew just across the top of these straps with my overlocker. Again, you can use a zigzag stitch. So I've just sewn across the top of these straps. And I'm gonna turn this to the right side out and just lay it flat so that I can add my sleeves. So now I'm just gonna take one of my sleeve pieces and find this mark that I left, which is the central mark from the pattern. And I'm just gonna line that up to the seam that I just sewed. It's just lining that mark up here and then pin that in place. And then I'm just gonna pin the rest of the top of the sleeve around the curve of the armhole. It's normally easier if you line up the very ends of each piece. And the same on the other side and then you can just fill in the gaps so you'll be pinning two layers of the top to the one layer of the sleeve so I've just finished pinning around that hem and then when you fold it out you can see your sleeve properly also forgot to say this should be right sides facing together as well so when you lay your sleeve onto this fabric they should be right sides together so i'm just going to go in and sew this hem in place with my overlocker again you can use your zigzag stitch so just following the curve round and then i'm going to repeat the exact same thing for the sleeve on the other side so I've just sewn both of the sleeves in place 
And now I'm just gonna fold it with right sides facing together. I'm just going to pin along both of the sleeves and then along this side bit here. So I've just pinned up this sleeve and then down this side bit here. Um, I'm gonna repeat the same for the other side and then sew that in place with my overlocker. Again, you can use zigzag stitch. So I've just finished sewing down the sides of the sleeves and down the side of the top. So now I'm gonna move on to my hems. So I'll start with the sleeve because it's a little bit more straightforward. So for this, I'm going to recommend a single hem with some interfacing. So you just want to take your interfacing, lay that at your bottom edge, and then just fold that edge up over the interfacing. And then I'm going to take my iron and press that in place. So I'm gonna follow that around both bottom edges of the sleeves and then I'll come back to show you how I'm going to sew that in place. So I've just finished pressing that in place. Hopefully you can see that. So it's got the interface in between those two layers. That's at the very bottom of the sleeve. And now I'm gonna go in and sew this in place with a zigzag stitch. So I've just got my machine set to the middle size of my zigzag stitch. I'm just gonna place the right side of the hem under my foot and then I'm just gonna follow that round. So I'm gonna keep going round until I meet up with where I started just so that this can't come undone and then I'm going to repeat the same for the other sleeve. So this is how that should look when you have finished. So I've done that on both sleeves and now I can move on to finishing off the bottom hem of the central top piece. So I've just turned my top to the right side out. Now we're gonna look at finishing this bottom hem here. Now there are two options for how to finish this off. The first is using a bias binding tape, which looks something like this and you're essentially going to fold this over the bottom of the seam. Um, you can buy this ready done. This is a standard bias binding, so it doesn't have much stretch, but you can buy um, like jersey or stretch bias binding. Um, I will leave a link to some that I found if anybody wants to do it that way. You can also make your own bias binding, so I'll leave a video of how to do that if you want to give that a go out of the same fabric. But for me personally, it is a pain <laughs> to do. Um, so if I can buy it, I will always rather buy my binding. Um, so all you would do if you were using a bias binding, this is going to be a little bit easier than the other option, would be to sew this side just here and then fold it round and sew the other end in place. Again, if you want more of a detailed video of this there are loads of videos on YouTube I will try and find one um this is quite a thick bias binding so you'd probably want a smaller one let me see what this is this is 25 millimeters so you'd probably want one a bit smaller than this so that is the first option which is probably a little less fiddly but the second option which so the first one with the bias binding will keep it pretty much the same length whereas this one will take a little tiny bit off the length and that option is to just do it in pretty much the same way as you did your sleeves the only reason this one will be a little bit trickier is because there are two layers of fabric I know this is quite difficult to see because everything's kind of blended into one but here I folded this up and it's gone over the top of the interfacing and stuck in place. But then this is just much easier to fold on top of that now. I actually did press this in place and it stayed, but 
this is, I'm filming this part the next day of when I pressed it. Um, so it's come undone a little bit. So I'm actually gonna go in and redo that and do the rest of the top. Um, so obviously you have your two options there, the bias binding, if you can get that, is probably gonna be less fiddly. Um, but I personally prefer the way that this looks just because you've not got anything additional on the bottom. Just that it's a little bit fiddly with folding up the two layers, but it is very, very doable. So I've just finished pressing that in place. It's actually stayed really well with the two layers. Obviously the bottom layer is kind of glued down by the interfacing, but the second layer has stayed really well. So actually I'm just gonna switch that to the right side and place that underneath my foot. And I'm just gonna follow it round in exactly the same way as I did with my sleeves. So I'm just gonna keep following that round until I've done the entire bottom of the top and then I'll show you how it looks. So I've just finished sewing that hem. It was actually way easier than I thought it would be and it's made a really, really lovely hem, which can be tricky with jersey fabric because they kind of buckle. Um, but that works really, really well. I miraculously didn't miss either of the layers. Um, I think the trick is to make sure that you press it first and the interfacing makes a big difference um, with making sure that your first layer sticks down. So if you want to skip the binding, that definitely isn't as difficult as I was making out. And while I'm at this machine, I'm just gonna do one last thing to finish the top off. This is completely optional, you don't have to do this at all. But that is to add a top stitch just around this neckline. Um, so I'm just going to place just where the shoulder seam is, just under my foot here. And I'm gonna follow this just straight around the seam that we've got here. Just take it nice and slow and that will make sure that you can get it nice and neat. So I'm just gonna carry on, do the whole neckline until I meet up with where I started the seam. So that's what your top stitching looks like around the neckline. You can also see the hem at the bottom more clearly here as well. So now I can move on to my pink top. So I've lost a few clips of how I made the Enid dress, but it's essentially exactly the same instructions, just minus the lining. And then I moved on to how to finish the edges. So I think what I'm going to try is to remove one of my needles from my overlocker and then try going around the edge with just a thin seam on there. Think in pink. I'll see how that looks. So I've just threaded up my overlock up with one needle. I'm gonna try it out on the sleeve, I think. Don't know if I've ever used this machine with only one needle, so I'm curious. I'm gonna start it at the seam. Just trimming some off, because it's kind of got messed up with um, sew in the rest of it. So I'm just gonna trim off the very end. So you can't actually see it very well, which I guess works quite well. I don't know how like sturdy this is gonna be, like it might not last super well, but I can't imagine I'm gonna be wearing this too much. So I think this is gonna work fine. So this is how it looks. Like I said, you can't see it super, super well. And I don't think it's gonna be the best hem in the world, but I think for this purpose, it will work absolutely fine. So now that I've finished those edges, both of my tops are done and I can try everything else on.